In World War I, guns began to assume monumental proportions. Big Bertha, the German siege breaker, could hurl an 800 kilogram projectile 13 kilometers. That was used to devastating effect in the early stages of World War I. But during World War II, a class of even larger super cannons emerged. And their psychological effect on the men facing them meant that, like Bertha, they all had personalized names. And one of the biggest was called Annie. Annie was one of 25 massive railway guns designed and built by the famous German Krupp Steelworks prior to the commencement of World War II. Designated the K-5, they were developed to deliver shells capable of destroying the French border fortifications known as the Maginot Line. The first objective was to deliver a large projectile containing a large amount of explosive to the target. The second objective was to provide range. And some of the quarter of a ton projectiles were able to reach 50 kilometers. Although they never saw service on the Maginot Line, they were involved in a variety of sieges. At Verani, that most famously took place during the American invasion of the Italian coastal town of Anzio in early 1944. Annie was one of two K-5s moved and hidden in rail tunnels, 18 miles above the coastline where the Americans had landed. From this vantage point, over two months, the pair rained down their massive exploding shells on the 70,000 Allied troops trying to break out of the established beachhead. It was during this time that the train-like sound the huge shells made as they passed overhead earned the guns the nicknames Anzio Annie and the Anzio Express. And the K-5's 288 millimeter caliber barrel was rifled with 12 seven millimeter grooves, making it not just big, but extremely accurate. Each K-5 railway battery consisted of two guns. Each gun had its own train with engine and six rail cars. Ultimately, it was that size that proved her downfall. For a railway gun, you had to lay tracks to get it to its destination. Now, not only was that intensive in terms of manpower, but also inadvertently, what you did was when you were laying these tracks, you were providing a path for the Allied bombers to track where that railway gun actually was. So its survivability was put into question by virtue of the fact of the tracks that it was running on. The railway gun's great advantage of being able to use existing infrastructure to besiege armies was, paradoxically, its Achilles heel. When on January 20th, 1953, at the height of the Cold War, former World War II General Dwight D. Eisenhower became President of the United States, his inauguration parade included 65 bands, floats from the then 50 states of the Union, 22,000 servicemen and women, 350 horses, and a gun. A brand new 280 millimeter cannon. In the early 50s, they were exploring how to deliver nuclear payloads. And there was a series of tests in Nevada where they tested a variety of different delivery systems. One of which was the M65 howitzer. With missiles capable of delivering atomic warheads, the most powerful weapons on the planet, in the control of the US Air Force, the US Army felt it too should have a weapon of similar force. And when in 1949, the US Atomic Energy Commission announced the development of a 280 millimeter caliber nuclear projectile, 
the Army set to work developing a mechanism to deliver it. The result was a self-propelled gun with an overall weight of 78 tons, a length of 26 meters, and a width of 5 meters. Advances in mechanics meant that, once in position, Atomic Annie could be set up in 15 minutes. And in May 1953, in the deserts of Nevada, the weapon was tested. And they did actually fire an 800-pound nuclear shell from a 280-millimeter artillery piece seven miles in the Nevada desert to explode as a nuclear device. And it's the only time, certainly in the Western world, that a nuclear shell had been delivered by a cannon. Nine M65s were deployed in Europe to counter the Soviet threat. But Atomic Annie, like Anzio Annie, was a transportation nightmare. On the road, it resembled a large fire engine, with two prime movers using independent steering systems, one positioned at either end of the gun carriage. Its propensity to tip over earned it another less favorable nickname, the Widowmaker. Evolution sometimes heads in a direction that doesn't quite work, and nuclear technology did not find a natural place fired from a gun. As the end of 1962 approached, the idea of the stately and visible progress of an atomic cannon moving across the world as a crucial influence had passed. New weapons had been developed, and the atomic annies joined their cousins, the K-5s, in retirement. All were withdrawn from service, along with their 80-odd shells constructed for them. <laughs> 